Thank you and good morning everyone. Uh, on behalf of the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, uh, I want to start out today by wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving is actually one of the, the uh, biggest holidays in the United States. It actually is a tradition that started back in 1621, before the founding of our country, when the earliest settlers arrived in America. And it was an act of kindness, an act of goodwill, and an act of thanks that created this Thanksgiving tradition. So in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I would like to thank OPPI um, for not only inviting me here today, but also for the long-standing relationship that we've enjoyed um, together as we work across the innovation ecosystem, work with regulators and government officials on helping to improve the innovation landscape here in India. And um, just generally speaking though, between our countries, we have so much in common because we share the same vision. We want to achieve success in our, for our communities and for our families. We embrace the possibility of new opportunities, new knowledge, and the chance to make a difference. We want to leave the world better off and more secure than we found it. And today, India is improving lives and pulling people out of poverty through its transformative technologies. And the work of OPPI and its members play a very important role in this transformation. Today's program provides a great opportunity to discuss ways to achieve the next phase to support India's efforts on a global scale. I think you've heard some of those efforts already from our, our previous speakers this morning. And from an intellectual property perspective, I very much value our work together as we seek to streamline processes, share international best practices, and encourage regulatory and legal systems to support all industries. The U.S.-India ties are very strong. They're built on our long history of diplomatic relations and trusted partnership. We are two of the world's leading democracies and, the two, and two of the world's largest economies powered by our innovative spirit and of our people. The growth of our economic prosperity has been extraordinary. The United States is India's largest trading partner, and we enjoy over $190 billion in two-way trade between our two countries. Most major U.S. firms have made significant investments in operations in India, making the United States States also India's largest source of foreign direct investment. An expanding number of Indian companies have also found the United States to be a welcoming destination for trade and investment. And the investments in the pharmaceutical sector and health are major contributors to our foreign direct investment or FDI projects from the U.S. into India. And it's important to note that many of these industries investing into India are what we call IP intensive industries. Industries keep innovating. And so it's important to underscore the importance for companies to be able to reinvest revenues into research and development, improve on their existing products, and bring new innovative products and solutions and services to the market. So what I call IP intensive industry, we've done this study at, at the US Patent and Trademark Office, was we looked at the companies that reinvest innovation into research and development. And then we, we did a study to discover what percentage of those make up our economy. And it turns out it's quite, quite dramatic. It's actually 41% of our gross domestic product, or 7.8 trillion US dollars that IP intensive industries are contributing to our economy in the US. So, so for IP, this intersection is between innovation, research, competitiveness, and they're all interrelated. And this interrelation is one area that where we work very closely with India. And if I may quickly turn just very briefly to my role here in India, there's three primary functions to the work that, that I'm responsible for. One is the government-to-government -government work that we do every day in helping to advance policies and improve intellectual property systems, not just in India and, and South Asia, in my region, but also throughout the world. And then we also 
work very closely on behalf of industries, mostly U.S. industries, that are operating in India or seeking to, to open doors in India and invest in India. And we help them in understanding the differences between our different systems and where there are issues, we advocate on their behalf with, with the government. And the third pillar is one where I support outreach and education in promoting awareness and the importance and the need to respect intellectual property throughout the region. So in my government-to-government -government role, I work closely with the Indian government and with the other countries throughout South Asia as they seek to strengthen their economies and their innovation ecosystems through intellectual property and to help promote a more effective regulatory and IP enforcement regime. And with industry, like with many of you here, uh, I work closely with you, and the presence of almost every major U.S. company and industry, industry sector is in India, as well as major Indian investment in the United States. These two uh, relations have become one of the pillars supporting our shared economic prosperity. And for decades now, U.S. companies have also played a key role in building and advancing India's healthcare system. The U.S. government, my colleagues and throughout the U.S. government, and the health agencies, like within the U.S. AID and the Department of Health and Human Services, also work closely with their Indian partners to respond to uh, supporting health needs throughout India and throughout the world. And across the spectrum, our U.S. public health experts have been partnering with India to strengthen public health laboratories, advance joint research and development, strengthen regulation for life-saving drugs and devices, and improve inf infection prevention and control at hospitals and public facilities. In the last 20 years, the United States invested more than $1.4 billion in healthcare assistance to India, and we've worked closely to battle over other life-threatening diseases such as smallpox, polio, HIV, and tuberculosis. As many of you know here today, the U.S. and other global healthcare companies have brought and partnered to bring critical technologies, know-how, and experience to India on a range of corporate social responsibility programs. From many voluntary licenses to access innovative technologies during the pandemic, to patient assistance programs where companies donate innovative drugs to patients who otherwise would have to pay out of pocket for treatment. While these programs help ease the burden, the complex and difficult to navigate healthcare and regulatory landscape in a country can place a strain on patients and their families. So from robust economic development to access to clean energy, from maintaining food security to promoting health, we are stronger when we work together on these issues that matter to our people. And more on our work together, especially as, as it relates to innovation, healthcare, and intellectual property. Um, during ministerial level meetings over the past two years through the India United States Trade Policy Forum, the ministers acknowledged the significance of creating resilient and secure supply chains. In this context, they agreed that India and the United States should, con should could continue together with like-minded partners and take a leading role in developing secure supply chains in critical sectors of trade and technology, acknowledging the strong history of collaboration between India and the United States in the field of health, the ministers also identified this sector as being particularly important in the context of work on resilient supply chains. India also noted its interest in partnering with the United States and U.S. allies in developing more secure pharmaceutical manufacturing base for augmenting global supply chains. Should have stapled my pages. <laughs> um, you know, and, and this is this is uh, in addition where I've just in my own experience here in India, and I've been here now about three and a half years. I've seen a tremendous spike in this innovative capacity within the country. We've heard of one of the major contributors to that. We just heard uh, from Maruchi on from Indogene on uh, on AI and the impact AI is having. 
but I feel that it's having an impact across the life science space where more and more innovative solutions are being developed, where companies, including startups, are starting to embrace innovative solutions and bringing uh, new, new, new products and new uh, innovations to market. And all of this means that intellectual property systems also have to keep pace. And so I'm also for, I'm pleased to see that that's actually been taking place. And we've seen just within the past couple months um, the IP office here in India has published draft amendments uh, for streamlining several changes to its current procedures, including pre-grant opposition, foreign application filing disclosures, and annual patent uh, working statements, Form 27, as we all know and love it. Um, the, and the Indian IP office also is asking for uh, stakeholders to share with the government what do they need to do within their manuals and guidelines to help bring more consistency in the decision making that's, that the office is making, but also to help guide applicants in their preparation of applications before the office. So all of these are steps in the right direction and, and one that I'm uh, very look, much looking forward to continuing to support. And you also heard from uh, our previous speaker about the Department of Pharmaceuticals, the, the re recent uh, publications and uh, schemes that they've been releasing to help promote uh, cost-based, uh, this, uh, this transformation from cost-based to innovation-based growth in the, in, in the healthcare sector. And so there's a lot going on and a lot that's uh, very, very uh, in promising and one that drew me to come here from Silicon Valley where I worked very closely with the U.S. pharmaceutical industries and the ties between the U.S. and India became quite clear to me and it's what drew me to, to, to leave the U.S. and to come here to help support this effort and to, to do what I can to help make our partnership as strong as it can be. So in closing, I'll just say that our futures, our people, and our prosperity are linked, and together we will advance our prosperity, promote shared democratic values, and bring the creativity, innovation, and brilliance of our people together to solve the most pressing problems of today and tomorrow. And I look forward to working with all of you on that journey. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful time.